everybody, welcome back to a brand new playlist on the channel, the 132 scale aircraft build. And this time I'm going to be doing ICM's 132 scale uh, CR42 Falco. I'll be using the Quinter Studios uh, interior set, the uh, cockpit set for this. That's a 3D decal set. And also I'm replacing the wheels with some CMK resin ones. So in this first episode, I'm going to start off by uh, building the cockpit and using the Quinter Studios uh, 3D decals. And hopefully uh, we'll get to the stage where uh, in the next episode we can get the fuselage joined up. So uh, let's get over to the bench and uh, make a start on this cockpit. Okay, it's always nice to get the instructions out on a brand new project. And uh, I'm going to be starting this week... Uh, with the cockpit, the usual place uh, for most of our aircraft builds. Uh, the instructions appear to be quite clear. I've, uh, this is actually the first ICM kit I've ever built. So it'll be interesting for me to see how they go together. The kit has some really good reviews. So uh, hopefully we'll get a decent result with it. So let's make a start. We'll cut out some of the first parts for the cockpit and we'll start to do a bit of assembly. Well, to be careful with this, it's already uh, bent on the sprue gate. So have to be careful trimming that off. Should be alright uh, if I take a bit of care with it. These connections here are very close to the sprue. There's hardly any room to get uh, the cutters in. So I'm using uh, just a standard knife just to remove those parts. Of course, these frames are very delicate. Uh, so you just need to be careful not to break them. It would be easy to, easy to do that. I'm just looking carefully at the drawings in the instructions just to make sure that none of these uh, what appear to be tabs are not actually part of the model. The CR42 is a complete mystery to me. Um, I've never built one before. In fact, I can't recall ever building an Italian aircraft in all the years that I've been building aircraft kits. So this is completely new to me. And uh, it's nice to do something like that for a change. Having just come off the back of a Spitfire Mark I, which I must have built many over the years. This is a complete change of scene for me. I think sometimes uh, it's good to do that, just to refresh things a little bit. <laughs> Maybe learn some new things, do a bit of research. Now, because I know nothing about Italian aircraft, I'm going to be following the uh, ICM instructions for the paint call-outs and the call out for Tamiya colours which is good because that's the uh, main manufacturer that I use and they also quote Revel colours as well I've never used Revel paints so uh, the Tamiya call outs are the ones that I'll be going with
with a couple of ejector pins on the back of this seat. Uh, but they're actually raised, which is a bit unusual really. Normally ejector pins are sunken, so you've got to either fill them or scrape the plastic back until you get to the bottom of them. You can tell how often I use standard Tamiya cement from the uh, dust on the bottle top. It's very rare, but in this particular instance, this uh, part's a little bit tricky to hold on to and the quick setting will just evaporate before you get a chance to locate it. Just put a drop of Mr. Surfacer 500 on the join of this part just to blend it in a little bit. Now at this stage I just want to take a look at the main fuselage halves just to see how the cockpit fits in here. So the uh, floor and bulkhead go into the fuselage house without any problem. Closes up nicely. So uh, that's not going to cause us any problems. We'll be able to get this primed up, these uh, sub-assemblies. And uh, I'll start to do some painting on them. I just used the three location holes in the floor there just to locate this cross piece. Uh, just so that uh, I'm going to be able to paint that all together. So at this stage I'm also taking a look at the Quinter Studios uh, instructions for the 3D interior decals. And of course we're going to have to remove some of the interior details such as on the instrument panels here. Uh, but there's also some whole parts to be removed so we need to take this instrument out uh, this gauge here uh, from the side frame that's replaced uh, with another Quinter Studios part which goes directly onto the side of the uh, fuselage. So uh, just some careful work with a sharp knife and uh, those side frames are ready for the Quinter Studios parts. Now I'm actually going to glue this uh, rear seat pad and its frame onto the side frame. That's just so that I can paint it all as one and get all the joints sorted out. So this is the uh, rudder bar which is a bit of a giveaway really as to the aircraft's vintage. Most of the CR42's contemporaries at this time were starting to use uh, separate articulated rudder pedals rather than uh, a simple bar like that. So again it's just another interesting thing that I don't come across very often. I'm just taking a look at these uh, side consoles because they're quite heavily modified with the Quinty Studios parts. There's a replacement uh, console in there and I think we just need the base of this.
So I'm going to completely strip these of the molded on detail. So obviously I'll paint this console together with the uh, framing and then we'll apply the Quinter Studios decal on top of it. Okay, so that's the basic cockpit minus the rudder bar and the uh, port sidewall or side console. So at this stage I've deviated from the instructions a little bit and fitted this top frame here. Uh, that's so that I can get a good finish of the colour without any more gluing later on in the assembly. Uh, ICM tell us to actually uh, fit the mainframe onto the floor, do all the internals and then try to install this top frame. But I think that would be very difficult to get a neat result uh, doing it like that. The downside of doing it like this, like the way I've done it, is that you've got to reach in to apply the decals and do some of the detailing. But I'd rather do that than uh, the way ICM would have you do it. So after priming that assembly, uh, the uh, joins on that top frame disappear. So it's just a neater result doing it like that. So now I'm going to apply a coat of uh, XF66. This is the base cockpit colour, which is a light to medium grey. Okay, so that's my base coat of XF66. And uh, now I just want to give these a gloss coat, ready to do some washes. And we can start the weathering process before we do the assembly. So with the uh, gloss coat dried, I just want to go over some of these parts with uh, some panel liner. I'm going to use these AK panel liners. I'll use the 7072, that's for grey and blue camouflage. Okay, so I'll let that dry. This is an enamel wash, so I'll uh, remove the excess with some mineral spirits or white spirit. So the uh, wash is dried now, and I can just remove the excess with a cotton bud. And I've just got some mineral spirits, white spirit on here. Okay, so uh, with all the wash removed now, I can 
give all these parts a coat of flat varnish then uh, I'll just pick out a few highlights uh, by dry brushing a lighter grey on them. This is some Tamiya Brown Paneline Accent Colour which works nice over silver. Okay, we can do a bit of assembly now. Starting off with the seat. Okay, let's try the first of these 3D uh, decals. So they appear to be uh, pretty straightforward. They act just like a normal decal.
just a little bit of white showing around the edge of these handles but it's an easy job just to touch them up a little bit with some flat red So uh, these, uh, dec these 3D decals are really interesting because uh, this application here where I've got the foot straps, they basically act as though they're kind of a vinyl rubber really. So they're very flexible which enables you to bend the decal over and attach it to both sides of the footrest. So uh, they're really good. As I say, it's the first time I've used these and I'm really impressed.
the instrument panels in two uh, halves. One goes either side of the fuselage. With the fuselage halves together, I'm just making sure that the two separate parts of the instrument panel are in alignment. It's uh, very easy to get these slightly out of position and it's not obvious until you come to put the fuselage together that you've got them in the wrong place. So I'll just check that everything goes together all right. Okay, so that's the uh, cockpit completed. And uh, that's gone together pretty well. The framework's a little bit fiddly to get everything lined up. But uh, just take a bit of care and it will go together. The parts are accurate. And the Quinta Studios uh, instruments and uh, handles and so on are a massive improvement. They really add an awful lot to that cockpit and really detail it up. Uh, I've got to put the seat belts on. Now you'll notice that I've removed the Quinta Studios belts. Uh, I just decided that they didn't look right and a couple of the uh, shoulder straps had cracked so they were starting to look a bit of a mess. So I've got an Edward uh, photo etch harness on order which should be here today actually uh, and I'll get that fitted just as soon as it arrives get this cockpit installed. So uh, that's it for this episode it's a good start getting the cockpit together it's always uh, the first stage for me of an aircraft build. So in the next episode I'll get that fitted into the fuselage house, we'll get the fuselage buttoned up and hopefully we'll get most of the airframe put together. So that'll be uh, just coming up in the next few days so hopefully you'll be able to join me for that next one. In the meantime look after yourselves everybody and I'll see you in another few days time. Bye for now.